Okay, so uh, I'm going to do a video about a couple of things I picked up from the thrift store. The first, that was my chair by the way, the first thing being this, um, well, let me go ahead and back it up. I went to the thrift store yesterday and, um, you know, kind of found some stuff. I found this, which we'll get to later, and I found this. This is a Motorola Crazer K1, and um, yeah, it's for AT&T. Uh, it's red. I saw this at the thrift store and I was like, okay, I have three razors. Why not get a crazier to complete the the uh, collection? I did a video about this specific phone, except I think I, it was my friends at the time. He did the, he had the Verizon model. So it wasn't this specific phone, but it was a crazier. Um, so here it is. Oop, I think the computer just, um, oh. Okay, anything. Anyway, um, something is happening over there. Um, yeah, here it is. It's in pretty decent shape for what it is, honestly. Um, yeah, I paid five bucks for this, so you can't really go wrong there. I'll go ahead and power it on. What is this thing doing? Okay, there we go. We'll get to that in a second. Actually, I'm just going to close it so it'll go to sleep. So here's the phone. Go ahead and get out of that. But yeah, basically, um, it's it's a smaller Motorola Razor, pretty much. So, I mean, this one's for AT&T, so I can actually use it since I do have AT&T. But, um, yeah, uh, if I can focus on the screen, that would be great. Okay. Uh, I mean, anyway, it's really just exactly the same as, say, a Razor. Or... Actually, this is, more, this is closer to a Razor 2 uh, in terms of UI and styling. So, I mean, yeah. Um, I found a bunch of stuff on this phone. I actually found the previous owner's call logs, contacts, pictures. Whoops. I found their pictures. They left everything on this thing, basically. And that's been the case with a lot of phones I own. I found a bunch of stuff on the phones. And it's like, really, people? You can't bother to wipe the phone before you actually give it away to a thrift store. So, I mean, yeah, the thrift store people didn't even check it either. So, yeah. So there it is. I mean, there's really not much to say about it. It's basically... <laughs> I actually have a phone I did a whole video about uh, that's, you know, kind of similar in form factor. This is a Motorola uh, W375G, I think. And it looks pretty similar. Although this one's quite crappier than this. So anyway, uh, I think this has a 2 megapixel camera, I'm not entirely sure, but it's a nice little phone for what it is. Um, yeah, I have yet another backup phone I can use, should I need to. But, yeah, there you go, there's the Motorola Crazer. Um, the second thing being this magnificent IBM ThinkPad. That was not the adjective I was going for, but I was going for more like humongous, but yeah, here it is. Uh, this is an IBM ThinkPad 380XD. I got this at the thrift store along with the Crazer. I got this for 10 bucks. And when I first got it, it did not have a hard drive and I did not know if it worked. But I have a universal charger here, as you can see, with a billion different plugs on it. I found one that worked with this. This requires a 16 volt charger and my universal charger goes from 15 to 20, which is nice. So this laptop does work. It is fully functional. I had to uh, Jimmy rig a hard drive in there. It just takes a regular IDE drive, but I did not have the drive caddy that I was supposed to get with this machine. So I had to basically just shove the drive in there and then put a piece of foam up here so it wouldn't rattle around. It worked quite well, actually. The foam I had was perfect length or the perfect width. So yeah, got two stereo speakers up front. This has a 233 megahertz Intel Pentium. It has, oh, it actually has an MMX, Pentium MMX, so, yeah. Um, it has 32 megabytes of RAM, and the hard drive in there is a 12 gigabyte Toshiba drive. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and go around the laptop. It's got serial, parallel, VGA. Um, it's got one USB 1.0. It's got the charger port. It's got a PS2, and that is literally it. Um, there's really nothing else to it. I'm going to go ahead and open up the machine one second. 
here you go. And as you can see, you're not going to believe this, but the damn thing is running off its internal battery and it's perfectly fine. It's been running for, I want to say the past 10 minutes and it is at 100% still. So I have no idea how long this thing is going to last on its own battery, but it's been charging for the past few hours while I've been using it plugged in. And I'm just amazed that this freaking thing is running off its own battery when this computer is 16 years old. And it's being, uh, it's staying at 100%, so um, we'll have to see how long this thing runs. I'm probably going to shut this thing down after the video just because I'm really done with it. But that is pretty sweet that it's running off its own battery. So, um, it's running Windows 98 second edition. It has Microsoft Office XP installed on it. So here's that. I'll go ahead and open a Word document. Or just open Microsoft Word. This is Office XP, so this is like 2001. So here it is, I'm typing, yay. Oop, wait a second. Oh, there we go. So yeah, there you see. Um, it still does word processing after all these years. Um, it has a slight mouse drift problem. Uh, if you kind of whack it though, it'll stop eventually. Yeah, there you go. If you push right here pretty hard, it'll stop. It's kind of weird. It's an old laptop thing. I'm not really um, annoyed by it that much. So I'm trying to close Microsoft Word, but it's really not working. This is um, a benefit of having more than 32 megabytes of RAM. Uh, programs aren't as bitchy, so I'm going to try and see about getting more RAM for this thing. But yeah, I mean, there it is. And it has a brightness control on the side of the display. So I try to keep it at mid to low brightness just to spare the backlight because we don't know when that's going to go out. But yeah, I mean, there it is. I had a bitching time getting drivers and stuff installed on this machine uh, just because when I had Windows 98 on there, I pulled this drive from another laptop I'll show you before I end this video, and it was just a bitch getting the drivers to install uh, because when I booted this machine up, the optical drive did not work. Basically, the only means of getting data on here was the floppy drive. And by the way, it does have both an optical drive and a floppy drive, so that's really nice. So, I mean, yeah. Anyway, um, it was a bitch, but I finally got it done, and I have all the drivers installed and everything works. So, I mean, I guess I will play just a little snippet of whatever's in C Windows Media. It does play CDs. I did test it. But I'm not going to do that in this video because, you know, copyright. So, let's go down to media. And let's play the Microsoft sound. We all love that from Windows 98, right? So now we wait in eternity for it to open Windows Media Player 9. Come on. There we go. We all love that sound. No, I'm just kidding. Windows 95 has the more interesting MIDI sounds, but yep, there you go. That is the IBM ThinkPad 380XD. So uh, that's it for the thrift store stuff, but I did get something else from my good friend. Um, I got this. This is a Toshiba half top. Got this from my good friend Manly Evangelista. You guys should know him if you're part of my little community. So he gave me this. Toshiba satellite half top. He found it in, well, actually, he found it at a garage sale, I think he said. And the screen didn't work, so he took the screen off. And this thing was fully functional before I pulled the hard drive from it to put in here. But yeah, so now I have a spare half top that does function. Just needs a hard drive now that I pulled that. But yep, there you go. So that is the conclusion of my thrift store stuff. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video.